Why was CGI blood used in The Expanse? How was the epic finale of Season 5 actually filmed? And how did the cast film the scenes in Zero G? Hi, I'm Dylan. Let's go to infinity and beyond! The spaceships had to be realistic. Generally, in science fiction, creators go absolutely nuts when designing a spacecraft. Just look at the Death Star and Millennium Falcon as primary examples. They look cool and out of this world, but there's no way that they'd be practical in real life. Since The Expanse leans more on what's scientifically probable, the concept artists were given certain guidelines of what the spaceships could and couldn't be. While it might sound limiting, it actually isn't, because it allows the artists to understand the boundaries of the world. Designer Ryan Denning explained how he'd worked on Star Wars games for ages, and it was challenging to keep coming up with new ways to design ships, but the Expanse experience was different. The brief was to create something futuristic, yet still keeping in mind what was real today. Ryan told ArtStation magazine, What was nice about this show was that it's all based on technology we have on naval ships now, like cannons and railguns, just way more advanced. Keeping in line with honoring the past but looking towards the future, the side of the Razorback actually shows the evolution of flight. From the Wright Brothers' first airplane to the modern 747 and space shuttles, it's a history lesson that pays tribute to everything that brought the Razorback to where it is. The question is, will the future actually look like the Razorback, though? Bluer than Avatar One of the most visually impressive scenes from The Expanse happened in Season 2's episode Home, when Miller discovers the transformed Julie Mao at the heart of Eros. With all the bright lights and gorgeous shades of blue, you'd think you were back in Pandora and exploring the world of Avatar. Even so, it still looked like a particularly tough scene to film due to the heavy reliance on CGI here. Performing in a blue room, Thomas Jane was in his full spacesuit and the bomb was actually a prop. In the middle of the room, the blue-colored Florence Favre lay on a raised platform that would be edited out later. Her hair was also hidden under a cap as the wavy, underwater-esque effect was added much later in post-production. Essentially, this scene is just two actors in an empty room, having to pretend and believe they're surrounded by all the elements around them. Their natural emotion was critical to convincing the audience of the intimacy of the scene, because even after all the bright colors and effects were added, no one would have believed the authenticity if their interaction hadn't felt real. Goes to show how CG is only the final touch, but you still need the actors to make it real. Delighting science lovers everywhere. So the people who work on The Expanse definitely paid attention to physics in high school, as they understand the basics of force and momentum. In Season 1, Episode 4, Jim and Naomi are under fire as they run on a gangway to the spaceship. However, they start to lose their artificial gravity and begin to float away. Thinking fast, Jim locks a cable onto Naomi, gives her a push that sends her forward but sends him back towards the gangway, where he'll be able to lock onto the platform with his magnetic boots and pull her back. Not only was this scene an absolute treat for any science lover to watch, but it also showed how inventive the effects team were. While the spaceship itself was all CG and added in post-production, the gangway was real, as was the gravity-defying heroics. The actors were hoisted up by wires controlled by the visual effects team who let them act out the sequence, then maneuvered them back safely onto the platform. In this case, you can actually call the effects team the puppeteers here, since they were absolutely critical to get the scene right. It does look like a lot of fun though, doesn't it? CGI blood? Remember the old days when studios would use ketchup to emphasize bloody scenes? Well, it's good to say that they've taken things a few steps forward and found more realistic looking blood since then. After all, you don't want to crave a hot dog when someone dies on screen, right? But in The Expanse, the team takes it to a whole new crimson level by using CGI blood. Naturally, this isn't something new in the industry, but it's interesting how the show utilized it in its own unique context. Speaking to Screen Rant about Season 5, VFX supervisor Ryan Freer said, That had its own unique challenges, such as selling how blood would react in space as opposed to the Earth's gravity. It was a challenging task, but they knew they couldn't just rely on ordinary practical effects. Ryan elaborated that the secret to good CGI blood is that you shouldn't even notice it's CG. If you start noticing it, that's when it's too cartoony and you've lost the believability factor. Thankfully, Ryan and his team dedicated the time and patience to getting the effect right on the expanse. Put on your space boots! 
Michael Jackson might have been famous for the moonwalk across the stage, but the expansive spacewalk scene is just as, if not more, impressive. While the CGI is instantly noticeable here, because, spoiler alert, the actors weren't really in space, it's actually a mixture of both computer wizardry and nifty wire work. It was a physically demanding scene for the actors and stunt doubles, but stunt coordinator Matt Berman revealed that it all came together in the storyboard phase. He told The Verge, I design, with my aerial team, the most efficient and safest way to represent the zero-g, and the most economic and comfortable methods for the cast, based on set requirements and everyone's schedules. The crew reportedly rehearsed the scene days before they even shot, using computerized winches to sync up the camera movements. What's even more impressive is the time and effort being put into getting the logic and science behind a scene like this right. Without a shadow of a doubt, it pays off in the end, as fans and critics consider it one of the most scientifically accurate shows around because of believable scenes like this. Although, we wouldn't mind a crossover with a few Vulcans at some point, right? The Unexpected Influence after the original cancellation of the series, fans fought incredibly hard for it to come back. Fortunately, Amazon took notice of our pleas and even pumped more money in The Expanse's Season 4. It proved to be the music to the years of the visual effects team, especially senior supervisor Brett Culp, who was particularly interested in exploring Proto Miller with some new tricks he'd learned. Naturally, there was a need to emphasize that it wasn't really Miller on screen, but rather his ongoing struggles with the Proto Molecule. Abrupt glitches were the effects chosen here, but this approach was actually influenced by a creator and TV show you'd never associate with The Expanse in the first place. Speaking to VFX Voice, Brett said the following, I was inspired by an effect that David Lynch did with the Twin Peaks Reaper. It was a back and forth time thing that I had done years before using a side effects software called Tima. The effects team played around with the image and even the time of the frames to get the look of the character they wanted on screen. Well, that wasn't the only thing they experimented with in Season 4, because the increase in budget and freedom to go bigger resulted in around 2,400 visual effect shots being used across the entire season. And not one single fan was left disappointed by the visual spectacle. The Making of Illus For Seasons 1-3, to three, the production team actually had it relatively easy when it came to filming. Because they were always on ships and stations, they very rarely went on location. In Season 4, however, the story took the characters to Illus, a rugged and remote planet that was very isolated. This couldn't exactly be built on a soundstage or be purely CGI, so the team had to get creative and find the ideal location to resemble the desolate planet. Speaking to EW, showrunner Nareen Shankar explained what they did. Just physically mounting the production, we shot at a quarry about an hour and a half outside of Toronto. Difficult weather, difficult terrain, a hard place to build. It looks rugged because it was, and that was a big change for us, so that was a challenge. Additionally, the team had a race against time to wrap up the production before the dead of winter hit Toronto. In case you didn't know, it gets exceptionally cold there, especially in the wintertime. Despite all the challenges and the odds being stacked against him, they pulled it together in a remarkable way. There's simply no denying that Illis looked unique, and the team achieved what they set out to do in the first place. Naomi's Epic Moment Season 5's finale sent everyone's heart into a flat panic as fans feared Naomi was done for. Thankfully, The Expanse's creators decided to save her. Phew. This scene's riveting hook and storytelling, though, came together in the post-production process where that something special was added. In fact, it even impressed executive producer Daniel Abraham, who watched all the dailies that didn't have any effects in them. He told TV Line, she was in front of a green screen and actually the visor in her helmet isn't there. That's a CGI visor. So all the condensation and the spit, the way that when the oxygen comes in and it starts to clear it all up, all of that is done by the VFX team. So basically, the VFX's special effects replicated human breath. Wow, now that's something. Seriously, it's remarkable how far technology has come and what's truly possible now. Do you think the next season's CGI will be able to top this? Would you like to see more videos about The Expanse? Let us know in the comments section down below what topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for some more awesome videos. Thanks for tuning in.